Welcome back to Genius for Hire. I'm Matthew Perry. With me is Will Polston, and we're back uh, with the Atlantic Division preview. Uh, previously, you've already seen us, uh, or Matt and I, take care of the Metro and the Pacific. Today, we have the Atlantic. Uh, the Atlantic contained the Stanley Cup champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They've gone back to back, and they also contain probably the worst team in hockey, the Buffalo Sabres. We'll get to both of those teams some point in today's video, but we're going to start today with the Florida Panthers, who started... 37, 14, and five wound up losing to the Lightning in the first round. Uh, they made some extensions, which are probably their biggest moves of the offseason, bringing in, uh, re-signing Anthony Duclair, Sam Bennett, Carter Verhage. They bring in the veteran Joe Thornton, who I don't know how much he can really still do uh, at, this, at his age, you know, early 40s, but a uh, solid depth piece, nice veteran. Guys that left, Alex Wenberg, they lost. Um, he wound up, I think, getting, uh, moving to the Kraken anyway. Uh, Keith Yandel, um, and a few other smaller guys. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on the Panthers coming into this season? Well, this is a new year for the Panthers because this is their first year with Bill Zito as their GM. Um, so, I mean, he came out and he made a he made a couple of statements. You know, like you said, going to get Joe Thornton and getting somebody like Patrick Hornfist. You know, he's he's made some pretty solid moves. Um, Radko Gudis even coming in there as a as a as a depth defenseman. Uh, I I like some of the moves, but I think this is more of just like a see what sticks kind of year for the Panthers. I don't think they're going to be in anything close to contention. I mean, they might slip in for a for a late wild card, you know, coming in at the bottom of the division or, or whatever the case. Um, but I don't I don't think the Florida Panthers are going to be anything too spectacular this year. I think they're they're more of just. Uh, I mean, whenever you get a new GM, typically you just you go out, you make all these moves and you just kind of hope for the best. You know, you, you go out there and you try to make something work. Um, and, and they've made a, quite a few moves this off season just to see if something will stick. Um, but I, I think this is going to be definitely more of a year of rebuilding for the Panthers than anything. You know, I, I kind of have to disagree. I, I am, I'm kind of, uh, I'm happy with this Panthers roster, how it sits right now. And I think uh, a lot of my happiness is thanks to Aaron Ekblad returning from injury um, I forgot the exact injury was last season, but he was out for the year, uh, which kind of took a big hit out of the Panthers defense. I do think oh, yeah. defense is probably the weakest aspect of their game. I think they've, they've kind of developed a lot of offensive depth over the past couple of years. And I think right. re-signing Sam Bennett, re-signing Verhage and uh, Duclair, who has finally, I think, hit his stride in Florida, um, definitely, definitely helps that. You know, defensively, besides Ekblad, you've got Cam Wegar, who's you know slowly improving. Uh, Brandon Montour, who uh, I think they got from the Sabres, I want to say, last season. And then, mm. like you mentioned, Radko Gudis, who had a very good first season uh, in Florida. He was one of the uh, – he was sort of the top of the league in hits, which which he normally is. But him being a third-line defenseman, I think, is uh, pretty impressive. And then goaltending, uh, Spencer Knight, I want to say he's like 20, 21 years old. He's going to yep. he's gonna have a good career if he's able to develop um, how he should. And, you know, right there with him is Sergei Borowski, who's proven himself – to be a quality starter in the NHL. Are they um, running with Knight to start? Uh, I, from what I've seen, um, I think it's... What's the projected the, lineup? According to the Daily Faceoff, it has Knight over Bobrovsky, but mm -hmm. uh, that remains to be seen. They could split time, or we'll see who gets hot and who, you know, who goes cold. That's but, a lot of money tied up in a goalie that might not start. Yeah, but, you know, either way, I think it's a good, uh, it's a good tandem. I mean, oh, there's sure. a weakness there, and I think... They're kind of set up for the next few years because obviously Bobrovsky has the big contract and Knight's still right. fairly young. Um, you know, and we haven't even mentioned, you know, you still have Alex Barkov, you still have Jonathan Huberdo, you know, you still have guys that can score and and kind of, you know, mess with the puck. So I, I like what I see from the Panthers. Um, you know, this they're back in the Atlantic this year after um, the divisions were kind of mixed around last year for the COVID season. Uh, it's going to be interesting. There's plenty of competition. You know, the Bruins, the Maple Leafs, the Lightning – uh, it's not going to be the easiest task to get into the playoffs, but I do think they could get in there um, maybe in that third or fourth place spot in the Atlantic. Uh, but we'll have to see. We'll move on to the Bruins, who, you know, find success every year. You know, they, they finished 33, 16, and 7, third in the East. I uh, wound up making it to the second round before falling to the Islanders. Um, I think they've gotten better, honestly. You bring in Nick Foligno, you extend Taylor Hall, who's, you know, been very, very valuable to this offense uh, just since he was acquired a year or two ago. Brandon Carlo, one of the mainstays of your defense, got an extension. I think that's another important one. 
and then you bring in a, a veteran like Eric Holla, you didn't lose much either. Um, I, you, you know, you lose both your goalies, which I think is interesting. Uh, Yaroslav Halak, uh, they did not resign. And same with Tuka Rask, who since Tim Thomas, you know, back at the beginning of the 2010s, uh, you know, Tuka has been their guy and mm -hmm. he's, uh, he had some injury issues and stuff like that. He has not uh, found a new team yet. He's still listed as an unrestricted free agent, but uh, they're going to run with Linus Olmark, another guy they picked up uh, from the Sabres who he's had moments uh, in the NHL. Yeah. Where, you know, he's been able to prove that he can start, but uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they transition from to Rask, a guy that, like I said, they've used for 10 years uh, to a new guy in Linus Olmark. Uh, Goaltending has to be the biggest question about this team, but well, tell me a little bit about the other aspects of the game. I mean, you're absolutely right. It's going to be really weird seeing somebody in in between the post that's not Tuka Rask, you know, for the Boston uh, for the Boston Bruins. Um, my big thing that, that they lost is Tory Krug, and I'm kind of concerned about Tory Krug. Um, and on the defensive side of things, obviously losing Zdeno Chara. Yes, he's getting old. He definitely wasn't the Zdeno Chara of the past. Um, but I think this is going to be huge for a season for a guy out of somebody like Charlie McAvoy. I think like I think McAvoy is going to have a big step up role um, and he's going to look I think he's going to be great. I mean, he's a young kid, very, very explosive for, you know, uh, for his age. He's done great so far in the NHL for such a short time. Um, I really like the kid. I, I think he's a great player and I think you're going to see people like him step up. You're going to see people like Pasternak step up. Um, and this is going to be a fun team. I like the addition of Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall is going to be a great addition to have out there um, on the wing. And I think this is going to be, uh, obviously it's the Boston Bruins, you know, the Boston Bruins, they are who they are. They find a way every single year. Um, if Linus Olmark can step up and he can be, you know, somewhat decent. I think this is a, uh, I mean, this is again, yet another team that should easily find themselves in the playoff hunt. Yeah, the offensive depth here is, is straight up elite. I mean, the fact that, you know, guys like the, the third line is is Jake DeBrusque, Eric Halla, and Nick Foligno. I mean, that's the yeah, it's nutty. better third lines in the NHL. Um, a first line of Marshan, Bergeron, and Pasternak. I mean, you know, that's hard to deal with if you're a defense. Uh, on Absolutely. Any team. You know, the, the scoring will be elite. Uh, I think there's no question. Um, but, yeah, what can Olmark do? Can the defense hold up? McAvoy's still young, Carlos still young, but they're building up. You know, this is no longer Zidane Charles' team. It's no longer Dennis McQuaid's team. No longer Tory Crew. Dougie Hamilton's been gone right. for years now. Uh, you know, these are guys that they're going to have to build up with and find success with because it seems like McAvoy's not going anywhere. They just locked up Brandon Carlo for at least a couple more years. So uh, these are going to be the defensive mainstays for the Bruins, uh, for better or for worse, and they're going to have to build up with them. But uh, I would expect playoffs again for the Bruins. I think that's um, pretty easy to say. Um, I, it I, is like a it, it's like a changing of the tide. You know how like the uh, like the Red Wings. You know we saw the Red Wings go from super old to all of a sudden now all their old guys are retiring. You're starting to see the script get flipped. You're starting to see the prospects come up. I think the Bruins are starting to flip through that because now you're seeing. Um, you know, the mainstains aren't, you know, McQuaid and, and, and Chara. And like you said, you know, now you're looking at McAvoy, you're looking at Pasternak, you're looking at, you know, all these guys to step in um, and, and be a factor. And so now and now now even on the goalie side, you know, Tuka Rask on Linus Allmark, obviously, you know, it's it's completely the, the script is completely flipped. But, um, you know, enough staples have been in there and they've been a competitive team for long enough. Even their young guys have done a great job coming up and and forming up to the NHL level really, you know, uh, pretty fast. So I, I think it. You, I, I'd imagine the Bruins don't skip a beat. Uh, we'll move to the Toronto Maple Leafs, who choked as usual. They finished top of the North Division, uh, which was arguably the easiest division in, in hockey last season. It's all the Canadian teams. Uh, wound up losing in the first round of Montreal. We saw how far Montreal got. Um, this is classic Maple Leaf stuff. I mean, they're they're known for this choking it out after a great season, and they still have a great roster. Um, although they did lose plenty of guys, Jared McCann, Alex Chenyuk, uh, Nick Foligno, Craig, An uh, I'm sorry, Frederick Anderson, their former goaltender, Joe Thornton, you know, Jumbo Joe, Zach Bogosian, Zach Hyman, uh, didn't bring it, but uh, didn't bring back much. Peter Morazic, pretty much the only big notable one, maybe Nick Ritchie, if you're into him, but, uh, I'm gonna be honest, this team still looks fantastic. Uh, you know, Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner were towards the top of the NHL last season in points. And I think they'll be right there again. Uh, with the Maple Leafs, the question's always been defense. It's always been something they've lacked uh, depth in. And I do still think they're a defenseman or two away. But, you know, Morgan Riley and TJ Brody uh, manning that first-line defense is a good start. 
and I think you can build from there. Jake Muzzin's a great veteran there. I, I remember um, he, he was from the Kings prior, I think. Yeah, he won a cup with the Kings. So he's been there, done that. Uh, I don't hate their defense. I do think it needs one more piece. In net now, it's Jack Campbell, uh, another younger guy. Um, kind of reminds me of the situation in Florida with Spencer Knight taking over because you have Peter Mrazek backing him up. Now, luckily, Peter Mrazek isn't as expensive as Sergei Bobrovsky, but uh, you're kind of trusting a newer goaltender uh, to take the reins. And that, you know, can, it, it has its pros and cons. But uh, Will, talk to us a little bit about the Leafs. No, I mean, the, the Leafs are one of these teams in this division that, again, I think is going to be one of those teams that doesn't skip a beat. I mean, it, it's, you know, I like the addition of Peter Mrazek, whether he's going to be splitting time or backing up or or if he's going to be the mainstay. You know, you you know, you know say you can go with the young guy and Campbell. Um, but I would, you know, personally, Peter Mrazek is, is at least a great goalie to have into the system. You know, he's had, um, you know, quite some you know, quite a career so far, at least early on. Um, I, I like what the leaves are doing. Obviously, the leaves the leaves make their money in Mitch Marner and uh, in Austin Matthews, and you know exactly who they're going to be. Um, as long as they're still young and they still have that core, this team is still going to be competitive. Um, you know, I, I think the the bottom tier of this division is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit easy to wash out. So I think the the leaves, you know, I think there's very much the, your top tier teams and then your bottom tier teams. There's not much in between, and I think the leaves. I mean, not much has changed with ever it comes to the leaves. You know, sure, you've lost a couple of guys here and there, but, you know, you get some depth guys to replace them. At the end of the day, that young core is still there, and it and it's still going to dominate. So uh, I don't see why the leaves wouldn't be able to find themselves and maybe a maybe a three spot in this division or maybe a two spot, you know, if they're if everything's clicking. So, yeah, I mean, an offense, like I said, won't be a problem. The fact that uh, Jonathan to uh, John Tavares and William Nylander on the second line is pretty impressive. Then you have some great veteran depth on the fourth line, Jason Spezza and Wayne Simmons. Uh, I do like this team, and, you know, you would expect playoffs, but it's the, it's the Leafs, so you never really know what you're going to get with them. Uh, at some point, though, they're going to have to make that, you know, deep playoff run. It's uh, they're due. I, I think them being due is an understatement, but we'll go to a team that's not due necessarily, but they've just been doing it. Uh, they could be due again. Who knows? The Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, they went back to back. They did it. They defeated the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup final to take home their second ring in as many years uh, after a third place finish in the Central. So they really stepped up in the Central. Uh, obviously, you know, the big story of the offseason was uh, the salary cap, and they had to unload quite a few quality guys. Barclay Goodrow, Yanni Gord went to the draft. Uh, Blake Coleman, Dennis Savard, Luke Shen, uh, all those guys are gone. And um, obviously you still have your core, you know, you still have Steven Stamkos, Victor Hedman, Nikita Kucherov, Andre Palat, and you um, re-sign right in point to, I believe, something like seven years or something crazy, yeah. but he's locked up for a long time. And then in net, the big cat, Andre Vasilevsky, the best goalie in all of hockey. Um, this team might have taken a, a little bit of a step back, but it's not much. I mean, you bring in Brian Elliott as your backup goalie, Corey Perry, a solid depth forward, um, Pierre Edouard uh, Belmar, who I mm. think is going to be really, really good on one of the lower lines. Just uh, I've heard great things coming out of the locker room, how he's hungry, he's ready to play. Uh, he's one of those guys that I guess goes try hard. Yeah. Um, and, and bringing back Zach Bogosian, who obviously was with them for the first cup against Dallas. Uh, Will, obviously, we're both Lightning fans, but uh, bias aside, what are your thoughts on this team? Uh, I think the smartest thing this team did in the offseason was re-sign uh, Brisebois to give him an extension. This guy has been an absolute gem to the to the Tampa Bay Lightning, done a great job in the front office, and, and he's off to an amazing start this offseason as well. Obviously, like you said, with the cap issues, you're going to lose people, but I think everybody, all the Lightning fans knew it was coming. Uh, unfortunately, you can't guard everybody. Obviously, somebody of great talent was going to go to the Kraken. Uh, unfortunately, Yanni Gord ended up having to be the guy, but – I mean, it, it's one of those things to where, you know, the Lightning, even in their, you know, in, in their minor league system, the AHL with Syracuse, Syracuse has been there almost every single year, too. So it, it's one of those you're going to start seeing those younger guys come through like a cow foot on defense, like a like a Matthew Joseph on the fourth line. You know, you're going to see these guys who are going to be young, who are going to have to step up. 
Um, shout out Corey Perry, who just said, if you can't beat him, join him. He just, you know, he just said, you know what? I'm going to be on lightning now. Um, tired of facing us in the Stanley cup, I guess don't blame him. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I like the addition of Corey Perry, a nice veteran presence. And I, and I like what we're, what we're, what we're going to be doing. I think we got a lot of young talent. Obviously the Syracuse crunch has been great. I think breeze ball has been great for this team. I, Honestly, yeah, you lose a couple of good pieces, but is it even enough to say that they're not the favorite in this division? I mean, I, I think it's still very clear that they have to be if the favorite in the division, and I think they have to be either one or two, maybe up there with like the Avalanche or somebody like that for for number one in the in the in, in NHL. I mean, they yes, they have a couple of pieces that they lost, but I'm, I mean, it, it's going to be a next man up kind of mentality with some of the guys in the young, uh, uh, in the AHL. So um, I, I don't think the Lightning skip much of a beat. I think they're going to be right back up there, unfortunately, with the salary cap issues, like you said. Uh, definitely more subtractions than additions. But even then, the veteran guys and even some of the guys that we've brought back who have been in the system before, who've worked under John Cooper, you know, such as a Bogosian, such as a such as a Suster, you know, whenever you're going to be seeing these guys, um, it, it's going to be comfortable for these guys and so um it, it'll be a nice look for the lightning to go back to utilize some of these old guys and 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 hopefully you know contend for three in a row yeah uh breeze has been great he definitely finished what eiserman started um well-deserved extension and i don't think that uh you uh i mean i think you can say that the lightning are still a top five team in the nhl i think for sure uh, there's no chance they're out of that kind of caliber um this team's special clearly and you know there hasn't been a three-peat in the NHL since, I believe, the mid-'80s with the New York Islanders. Yeah. Can we see it here? I mean, I think this is the best chance a team has had in, in quite some time. We've had teams go back-to-back. Back. I think – who was the last team to do it? The Blackhawks, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, my I head. think so. Uh, maybe. Um, Blackhawks, Penguins, someone like that. Someone who's been successful in the last 10, 15 years. But <laughs> um, I do think the Lightning have a good chance at it. Obviously, we're not going to – make those predictions yet but expect another big year from the lightning uh we'll move to a team that probably won't have another big year at least for a couple more years the ottawa senators uh, this six in the north missed the playoffs didn't have much of an offseason kind of lost more than a game they brought in michael delzato for defense but they lost Derek stefan ryan zingle um there really isn't too much to say about this senators team i think it's going to come down to thomas chavat on defense and then Tim Stutzel, their uh, draft pick from I believe two seasons ago, uh, he'll be on. He'll be a first liner already, and um, it's kind of a big jump from last year where they were kind of easing him in. But yeah, I mean now he's going to have to take that big role. You have Matt Murray and Net, so at least you have someone you can trust uh, in between the pipes. But you know everything else about this team is kind of uncertain. I, I think you're right there. I mean, uh, unfortunately for them, uh, this is going to be a team. You know, it's it's very similar to the Sabers where you just need this team to kind of get older really uh this is still a very young team um you know they they have obviously a couple of veteran guys here and there but typically the core of this team obviously is the youth and i mean you've got guys out there you know like batherson who's born in 98 literally 23 like i am you know and, and it you know you've got guys like norris who's born in 99 you know even younger so this is a team that's going to take some time this is a team that's going to you know have to come together have to figure things out um, and it's only going to come with repetition, but right now they're in too, too busy of a division to find their way anywhere near the top of it. Um, they're going to be right there with the Sabres kind of battling out for last place, in my opinion. Uh, I think it, they're going to be fighting for eighth and seventh in the division. Um, but yeah, the senators, the senators are going to have a little bit of growing pains here and there. Um, but honestly, they've got some pretty, they've got some guys I'm somewhat excited about if, if they can, uh, if they can come together and maybe you'll start seeing them, you know, start to execute by, I don't know, maybe 2023, you know, if they can keep them around. Um, but right now it, it's, it's a young team, a very young team, and it's going to have a lot of growing pains. Um, so uh, unfortunately for Senators fans, I'm not necessarily sure this one's the year for you. Yeah, I don't think so, but, you know, give it a few years, be patient with them and, and we'll see how they grow. I, I do think uh, there is potential in what they have going. Let's, Bring in a few other bigger guys. I need the front office to go to work a little bit and, you know, maybe we'll have something. But uh, I want to go to a team that very much has something. That's the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, kind of a, an underdog heading in. Uh, barely got into the playoffs. They were the, they finished fourth in the north. Wound up obviously upsetting the Toronto Maple Leafs and moving all the way to the final where they did lose to the Lightning. But 
Uh, it was a great season from them, and I do think they've made some improvements. They brought in David Savard from the Lightning, uh, Cedric Paquette, also a former former Bull, uh, Matthew Perot from the Winnipeg Jets, uh, definitely helped the depth of this team. And it wasn't necessarily a team lacking depth, but there are a lot of young guys that are coming on up. And I think it, it, this season could potentially sit on uh, Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki. They're two, uh, two of their youngest forwards, but also two of the most up-and-coming forwards in, in, ho- in the National Hockey League. I do think, um, before I get your thoughts, um, Kia mentioned Shea Weber will not play this season. They put him on the injured reserve. He's, he's uh, kind of taking some time away, as is Carey Price announced today, actually. Uh, he's entering the uh, NHL Players Association, uh, this like program that they have. Um, and whatever it is, I, I have not read too far into it, but he will be away from the team during this. So that would mean that Jake Allen, who does have starting experience, he used to start for the St. Louis Blues, uh, he will be starting for the Canadians. Uh, will, I'll, I'll get your thoughts now. Well, I think it's key to say, if I'm not mistaken, I think Paul Byron could be missing the season there too. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, he has it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So this is, you know, you're missing your captain, you're missing your netminder, you're missing one of your alternates. I mean, this is this is a good team from top to bottom when healthy, you know, and when when they're there. Um, I, I think this is honestly, this could be a team that could fight for two or three if they're all there. Uh man, that Nick Suzuki line in the in the postseason last year. That kid can play. Uh, that kid was an absolute stud, um, and 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 they are very young and upcoming, especially on that end. Um, but lo- the loss of Shea Weber, the loss of Carey Price, Paul Byron, uh, it's going to be a lot for this team to handle. And I don't know if the the other teams in this division are necessarily weak enough to, you know, get, uh, allow for the Canadians to fall into a playoff spot. Obviously, the Lightning and the Bruins, you typically expect them to b- probably be one and two, or maybe the Bruins and the Maple Leafs will fight. You know, I expect the Panthers. Panthers to, you know, you you mentioned the Panthers could be fighting for a uh, for a number three spot if they if everything clicks. Uh, the, the Canadians have to be right up there too. You know, they, they have to be behind everything, um, and it, it's just looking like they may have just lost a little too much. Um, you know, to be on the outside looking in in this division. Um, I, you're right. I, I love that. I love what the Canadians have going for them. Um, but I just don't think, you know, it, it takes a lot to bounce back when you've lost two of your three captains. Um, and, and that's going to be tough for the Montreal Canadians to kind of overcome. And honestly, I, I just don't know if this is going to be the team to do it um, out, outside of that. You know, like you said, you know, who, who does it fall on? Do, do you trust Jake Allen to be the guy, you know, without a Shea Weber in front of him. Do you trust, you know, do you trust this team to make it happen? And and right now with some of their, with some of their players, I just don't know if I can see them uh, finding their way into a playoff spot yet again. I mean, even last year, they were what they ate, ate, like the last place seed to make the, the postseason. Uh, they were, yeah, they were towards the yeah, bottom. Cause they, cause they faced the, the Maple Leafs. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, even last year, you know, they, they found their way in and now this year missing, very, very key pieces to their team. Um, I, I'd like to say that I could see them in the playoffs again, but unfortunately with how much they're missing, I just, I don't think they're going to have that great of a year. I think you're looking at them to be in the four or five, you know, on the outside looking in when it comes to the postseason. Yeah. I, I would say they're a lock for the postseason if they had Shea Weber or one, oh, more for quality, sure. or one more quality defense. You bring in David Savard who's solid, but he's no Shea Weber. Uh, you're bringing Chris Weidman as well, but it just, I don't think it equals uh, Shea Weber's impact out there, but uh, I mean, the offense is nothing to really worry about. They have depth, they have, you know, up and coming guys, uh, young guys, like I mentioned, Suzuki and Caulfield, um, they're going to score. And I do think they'll unfortunately have to battle the Panthers for uh, that fourth spot in the uh, Atlantic division. It's a five team uh, division is how I really see it. Obviously the, the senators, the Red Wings and the Sabres are kind of outside looking in. Uh, they're still, they're just still focusing on growth, but you know, there's other five teams, the Panthers, the Lightning, the Bruins, the Leafs and the Canadians, you know, it's fair game. And one of those teams is not going to get in. Uh, right. So the, the Canadians could wind up being one of those teams, but they have uh, almost everything it takes. You know, maybe uh, if I'm the general manager of the Canadians, I go out, get another defenseman. Uh, I'm sure there's someone out there you can bargain with and get, uh, you know, one more guy. But right now, yeah, it's it's tough to say. Um, but I do think it'll be close. Uh, whether it comes down to fourth or fifth, you know, that's everything. So we'll see what happens with them. We'll talk about the Red Wings, who, who like I just mentioned, are, are kind of outside looking in, although they did improve 
Uh, they, they made a trade with the Carolina Hurricanes to bring in uh, Alex Ndalkovich, who's going to be their new goaltender. I uh, really like him. I was kind of shocked almost, honestly, by, by the Hurricanes making that trade because it seemed like Ndalkovich would be their tender uh, moving forward. Uh, it turns out they went in a different direction. But, you know, the Red Wings could take advantage of that. You know, bringing him in is going to be helpful. You know, you trade for Mitchell Stevens, who was kind of, uh, you know, he flew under the radar in Tampa. Obviously, he didn't get the same playing time that a lot of guys had. But when you have so many stars on that roster, you're not going to notice the little guys. So I'm very excited to see what Mitchell Stevens can do in Detroit. And then you bring in veteran defense and Nick Letty. You know, he's been all the way. He's won Stanley Cups with, with, the, with the Blackhawks. And, you know, he was in the playoffs these past years with the Islanders. So uh, that's a great guy on defense joining Mark Stahl, who I believe they, they signed to another extension. Uh, and then your, your offense is kind of still growing. Tyler Bertuzzi um, had a good year. Same with uh, Zadina. He's on his way up. Uh, Dylan Larkin, of course, is still the main guy on that offense. He's probably the face of this team, him and Robbie Fra uh, Fabry. But, yeah, I mean, this team's still, I think, a year or two away at least. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I love the the addition of uh, Nedeljkovic. I mean, that kid, uh, the Calder finalist, I think he, if I'm not mistaken, led the league last year in uh, – well, in, in, in save percentage and goals against average. I mean, Something that kid was an absolute, I think he had like a 0.93 save percentage and like a, le, a less than two goals a game. I mean, Nadelkovic, I, to see him go to the Red Wings, I was kind of like you, you know, I was like, no way, you know, like uh, I was actually shocked to see him move, but um, I think that addition alone is enough to bring them out of the cellar. Um, but I just don't know offensively what I like about this team other than, you know, Larkin, you know, Larkin Bertuzzi. Sure. But I mean, as a, as a, as a lightning fan, you're seeing a lot of these guys on here, Adam Erne, Nemestikov, you're seeing, uh, you're seeing uh, uh, Mitchell Stevens, like you just said. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you firsthand, it's not, it's not much of an offensive output. Um, you know, I mean, obviously there's other guys out here. There's Gagne, uh, you know, but uh, even uh, as I actually just went through the roster, I saw Witkowski on there too. It, it looks like it, it, it almost looks like a, a Tampa Bay lightning, like rejection hotline. You know, it just looks like this is where you end up if you don't, uh, if you don't make the cut. But um, again, this is just, I, I don't know. Obviously, this is another one of those teams to where, you know, hockey fans are are agreeing that this is this is going to be a team that's towards the bottom of the division. This is another one of those teams that gets lost. They're in that group that you say, you know, that, like I said, there's no in between. There's your good teams up here. There's your bad teams. Detroit's still down there. I mean, Detroit is, uh, you know, like. This isn't 2010, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't dots. You, this isn't, um, you know, everybody else. So this is uh this is a situation in which this is and again, growing pains. It, it's going to be a situation for the Red Wings to where um, honestly, though, Nadelkovich could bring them into a lot more games. I, I think this is going to be to where uh, the Red Wings could strike me as a team that could play spoiler, like down the road, you know, this could be a, a team to where like just impressive goalie play and somewhat decent defensive play could set them up to honestly win a couple of games here and there. So um, honestly, you could see them playing in the divisional games against the, you know, against the Maple Leafs or against the Panthers or somebody like that down the stretch to where you, that, you know, that could have serious playoff contentions, at least for one of those teams and, and could play a little bit of spoiler. But um, when it comes to the division and, and postseason hopes, I think we can all agree. And I think Detroit Red Wings fans will tell you uh, this isn't it. You know, this isn't the year yet. This isn't ready. Um, but they're in the right direction. I think Nadelkovich was a huge signing, um, or, you know, a huge acquisition, I should say. And uh, and I think this is a, a big step forward. Um, I think they're really looking to impress this offseason. And I think this is a great start. Um, and I think maybe in a couple of years, you know, if, if you continue to work at it um, and, and the guys that you have out there continue to to develop, this Red Wings team could be up there fighting for spot number three uh, in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I agree there's still a couple of years away. Um, but, you know, you mentioned the Lightning thing. Steve Eiserman's back with the Red Wings. You know, team It all makes sense. <laughs> well, yeah, these are guys that, that Eiserman potentially drafted or signed or, you know, they played for his team. So I'm not surprised he went with guys that he's comfortable with. But, yeah, I mean, there's potential here for sure. And I do think Nadelkovich will be a big part of that. But still a few more years away. Uh, we'll wrap things up with the Buffalo Sabres, who – no better team to wrap it up with. <laughs> yeah, they're a mess. Uh, you know, your captain, Jack Eichel, first of all, he's on the injured reserve list still. Second, he's trying to get traded. Three, they can't find anything for him. Four, your number one overall pick last year, Rasmus Dahlin, had a really bad first season uh, for a defenseman. 
not what you want to see. Five, the guy you picked this year uh, is still in college, Owen Power, uh, also a defenseman. He went back to school. So, you know. He he's, said, no, I'm good. <laughs> you gain nothing from the draft. Your offseason, you bring in Mark Pissick, who's a depth defenseman at best, who you, yeah. you used to play for you guys. So, I guess it's it's a fine homecoming. And then you have a new goalie in Craig Anderson, who I believe uh, didn't play the last couple of years um, because uh, I think he stepped away because there was something up with his wife or something like that. But he was good a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know how he'll fare now, but this team's a whole mess. Uh, besides Jeff Skinner and uh, looking at the lines, uh, who, I, who do I trust on here? I mean, Don, I'm trying to look at their defense and try to find one guy that I like. Yeah. I mean, Don had a bad first season. Pissick, I don't hate, but like he's not like quality. Well, you said it yourself, you know, a, a bottom six defenseman depth guy at best. That can't be your one, you know? Yeah, no, and he's, he's not. I mean, he's listed as the third line right D, but it's just that's you need to sign more than that. Guys, they lost uh, Matt Irwin, who would have been part of that defense. Uh, Toby Reeder, who was a who was a winger, and then Linus Olmark, who's now starting for the Bruins. But right. um, Casey Middlestat, we're going to need to see more from. Uh, Gergensen's is fine. Like he's always been, you know, at that level. They have Kyle Ocposo listed as fourth line right wing. I think he's going to, you know, I know he's getting a little older, but he's not that old. Um, he's going to have to have a big role. Same with Vinny Hinnestrosa. Uh, hopefully they get their best stuff out of Vinny, but this, yeah, I mean, this team is not much to be excited about. If you're a Sabres fan, you kind of an identity crisis going on, come off a season, you know, last in the East, you only win 15 games. Uh, I don't know how many they win this year. Mm. It's a full season now. It's not 56 or whatever. It's 82. Um, so you'd hope they win more than 15, but you can't expect a lot from the Sabres team. Not to mention that wasn't it last season that they set like the, the new record for most consecutive losses. Like they, they were in the dump. I mean, they were having a rough one. I, uh, it's not going to get better. Uh, it's not. Um, like you said, Jack Eichel, all the issues with him, you know, maybe a bright spot on this team, the one bright spot, maybe. Um, don't even want to be there. And I mean, do you blame them? Uh, right now, it's a situation where this team's not going to be good for a while. Uh, I hope Rasmus Dahlin can put it together. Um, obviously, number one overall pick, you don't want to see him kind of burned down like that. It's his first year. Uh, I'm not going to jump down his throat right away. Definitely wasn't, you know, something to be excited about, but you know, everybody has growing pains. Everybody has, a, you know, not everybody gets to the league. Some people are late bloomers. Um, but right now uh, this is the perfect time to be bad on the Sabres because there's not much competition, you know, who, 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 who down there is going to be fighting you for a spot, you know, and it, it's one of those situations to where you're right. This team needs to find its identity. This team needs to find out what it's going to do. You thought you maybe had a goalie that could stick around in Linus Allmark and now he's gone. Uh, you had, you thought what was going to be your longtime captain signed Jack Eichel and now he doesn't want to be there. Um, so what do you do? You know, what, what, even as a GM, I mean, you got to be freaking out. Like this isn't, this isn't a good situation. This is a poor Poor organization, and and it doesn't seem like it's getting better anytime soon. Um, you're probably looking at right around the same win total, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, it, it's just not it's not pretty. It, it, this is this is a this is a depressing way to wrap up this division. <laughs> All right, so you know we're at the end here. Give me your from you know one one through eight. Give me your Atlantic division. Okay, I think I'll start at the bottom because. Uh, I think it's easier to start at the bottom. I think whenever you get to those top teams, I think you're going to be having a little bit of a, of a little bit of a, a, a tough, but uh, I think you're, you got to go with the Sabres at eight. Uh, I, I would have to start with the Sabres at the bottom, followed by the Ottawa senators. Uh, I'm going to take the red wings at six at five. I'm going to go Florida Panthers uh, at four. I'm going to go Montreal Canadians. Something tells me that this wow. team still finds a way to at least fight for the number four spot in this division. But something tells me they're still going to be on the outside looking in. They've missed a lot, uh, but I think their young guys do enough to get them over the Panthers. Um, so I will take them there. At number three, I have the Toronto Blue, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, not the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, <laughs> Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, and then number two, the Boston Bruins, followed by the back to back champion, Stanley Cup. Uh, like Tampa Bay Lightning. I think they have to still be the front runners in the division. Yes, last year was a little bit tough finishing, uh, if I'm not mistaken, third 
in the, in, in the division, but uh, different alignments and everything like that last year, things were a little bit weird. Um, look for the lightning to hop right back in there. Um, I, I really don't think that their losses have been too much. Uh, and I think, uh, I think they still have to be up there. And I think the young guys are going to step up. Like I said, um, the Bruins, again, the addition, uh, you know, they're, they're, I, I don't think they lost enough to really count them out. And uh, again, another year for these young guys to come through. Um, and, and I still think with the Maple Leafs, with their young core, they still have enough to get it done. I mean, this is a team that won their division last year, taking on first place and then got, uh, like you said, got upset by the Canadians in the first round. Um, wasn't the postseason they expected. Um, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to do what they do. They're, they're kind of just there. Um, but until they make that next big step in the playoffs, I mean, probably just another first round exit for them. Um, but yeah, that would be my division from eight to one. For me, uh, since you're going eight to one, I might as well do the same. Uh, Buffalo Sabres, of course, at the bottom, uh, followed by the Senators at seven, six seed. I got to go the uh, Detroit Red Wings. I do think that they'll be better than the other two outside looking in teams. Uh, you know, four and five, you know, uh, the Canadians and Panthers, where will they uh, finished. That was a big thing for me earlier in this video. I have the Panthers just missing the playoffs at five, Canadians at four. Mm. I have the Lightning at three. They're never their strongest mm. regular season. They get the job done, but they show their strength in the postseason. We've seen that these last two years. I do think they get in uh, as the three in the Atlantic. Uh, two, the Boston Bruins, and then first, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, Similar to last year, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs are great in the regular season, but as soon as you get to the playoffs, they start choking. So yeah, um, I expect more, I expect, I expect more of the same, something similar like that. Um, obviously, I think the Lightning will still go far uh, in the postseason, whether the three seed or the one seed, you know, uh, they're still getting in. Um, so that's how I see it. But that's it for us, uh, for the Atlantic Division. Catch our other videos the uh, Central Division will be dropping tomorrow, the day after this. It's probably already out if you're watching it anytime after uh, opening day for the NHL. But, um, <laughs> yeah, catch those. Like, subscribe. Love us. Love you. Uh, Will Polston, Matthew Perry, the GMs for Hire. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.